And the next talk is going to be by Tianu He, and uh, she's going to uh, talk about comparison between pathogenic and non-pathogenic SIV infections and focus on mucosal tissue compartment reveal a critical role for adenosine pathway in the control of SIV-related immune activation and inflammation. Thank you. And thank the organizer of uh, AIDS 2014 for giving me this opportunity to present my work here to you today. So despite the use of antiretroviral therapy, the mortality rate is still high in HIV-infected patients, and largely due to end organ diseases caused by persistent immune activation and inflammation associated with HIV infection. And there is this pathway, adenosine pathway, that has already been studied in murine models in the context of cancer and autoimmune diseases uh, as a mechanism used by uh, T-Rex to uh, suppress immune activation and inflammation. So the main players of this pathway, CD39 and CD73, can convert extracellular ATP by multiple steps into adenosine. And adenosine can act as a direct player to suppress immune activation and inflammation in T effector cells. On the other branch of this pathway, as you can see on the left, CD26 can bind to adenosine deaminase and break down adenosine into inosine, thus relieving the immunosuppressive effect. So we want to investigate if this pathway plays a role in HIV and SIV infection, and if it does, what kind of role it plays. So previously in our lab, we have developed two non-human primate models for, of SIV AGM infection. African green monkeys, they are the natural host of SIV AGM. When they are affected by, infected by this uh, virus, they don't show chronic immune activation and inflammation, and they don't progress to AIDS. But pigtail macaques, they're not the natural host of SIV AGM. And when, when they're infected, they will show chronic immune activation and inflammation, and they will eventually progress to AIDS. So these models are ideal to study um, chronic immune, uh, immune activation and inflammation associated with SIV infection. So we utilized these two models and infected them both with SIV AGM and uh, measured CD39, CD73, and CD26 expression and also directly measured the adenosine and inosine levels in the tissues and correlated them with immune activation markers and proliferation markers. So when we were looking at the expression of CD39 and CD73, we saw a very, very, very interesting phenomenon. So when this pathway was previously studied in the murine models, they saw a great deal of co-expression of these two, two markers on Tregs. Where, but when it's studied in humans in the context of HIV infection, they barely see co-expression of these two markers. And we saw the similar results in the PBMCs isolated from the blood of our manual models. And here you can see they barely co-express these two enzymes on the same cells. However, when we look into the tissues, especially intestine, we saw a very significantly higher uh, co-expression of these two markers. So we think that the previous studies didn't see this co-expression is because most of the human studies focus only in the blood. So utilizing the advantage of our animal models that it's relatively easy to obtain tissue samples, we compared the co-expression of th these two markers in the mucosal sites uh, between AGMs and T PTMs. Here you can see, again, uh, not only the co-expression of these two markers are higher in intestine than blood, but it's also higher, significantly higher in AGMs than PTMs prior to infection. So then we want to know if this co-expression uh, changed after we infected them with the virus. Here you can see, again, um, when prior to infection, the co-expression level is very high in AGMs than PTMs, uh, and it remained high throughout the infection. Whereas in PTMs, although the pre-infection level is very low, it increased significantly after infection, which suggests a possible increase in adenosine production in this progressive model. And this, is what, this was to our surprise because we thought PTMs will have less adenosine to suppress their uh, immune activation and uh, inflammation. So we want to know what was really going on. So we measured the adenosine levels in the tissues, and in the lymph nodes, we didn't really see anything interesting. 
But in the intestine, we saw that uh, the level of adenosine is higher in AGMs, and in AGMs than PTMs pre-infection, and it increased significantly after infection. Whereas in PTMs, it's low to begin with, and it's low throughout the infection. So why is there this discrepancy between the increase of the, those two markers and still a very low level of adenosine? With this question in mind, we thought about the other branch of this pathway, which is CD26. And with great delight, we saw that um, in the intestine of PTMs, CD26 expression increased dramatically after infection, both on CD4 and CD8 T cells. And here in the lower left panel, you can see that um, the CD26 expression went from almost nothing pre-infection to almost 60% 60 60 in chronic infection. And then we also measure the innocent level in the tissue, which is the breakdown product of adenosine. And again, in the lymph node, we didn't really see anything interesting. But in the intestine, we saw that the adenosine level in the PTMs increased, uh, increased significantly after infection. Um, so this, is, this serves as a direct evidence that the CD26 increase might have broken down the, the adenosine in PTMs into innocent. And we also correlate the CD26 expression with the denosine and innocent levels. And here you can see um, CD26 directly correlate with the innocent level. So now we know that this pathway has definitely changed in, in, uh, after infection in these two models. And we want to confirm if they actually have a role in suppressing immune activation and inflammation. So we correlate the, the uh, adenosine and innocent levels with immune activation and proliferation proliferation markers. And here you can see adenosine levels inversely correlate with the proliferation marker Ki67 in both models. And the innocent level uh, directly correlate with both the proliferation marker Ki67 and the immune activation marker CD38 and HLADR. And then we also want to confirm that adenosine can suppress in inflammation. So we isolated the uninfected PBMCs from both models and stimulated them with CD3, CD28 in the presence or absence of adenosine, and then measured the cytokine production. Here you can see in the control group, after stimulation, the interferon gamma production is very high, whereas in the adenosine-treated group, uh, the inter interferon production is much lower. And with quantification, we saw that in PTMs, the interferon gamma production on both CD4 and CD8 cells uh, was suppressed by ex exogenous adenosine. And in the AGMs, not only interferon gamma production, but also L2 production was suppressed by uh, exogenous adenosine. So to summarize, our results show that increased level of adenosine is sustained in the intestine of AGMs during SIV AGM infection. And in the progress model, PTMs, Although CD39 and CD73 increased after infection, the adenosine production seems to be counteracted by the dramatic increase of CD26, which happened very early after infection. And we also show that adenosine did play a role in suppressing immune activation and inflammation. So all these results indicate that the adenosine production is significantly involved in the control of immune activation and inflammation in our non-progressive models. And the change of adenosine pathway predominantly occurred in the gut. So we propose that the future study on this pathway in the context of HIV, SIV infection should focus more on the mucosal side rather than only in the blood. With this, I would like to thank all the members in my lab in University of Pittsburgh where this uh, study is conducted. And I'd also like to thank Edwin Jackson's lab for the amazing mass spec result. And finally, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Barnard and Dr. Charles Renato for uh, conducting the initial study in humans with which we can compare our non-human primate results with. Thank you very much. Thank you for a very clear presentation. We've got time for a few questions. Yeah, hi, the, the, congratulations. Really great study and confirming <coughs> what different groups uh, have shown in the, in, in the human setting, at least in the blood. What, what we saw actually is the same what you saw in the lymph nodes in humans, actually. But uh, I wonder, uh, the aden adenosine is an extremely labile molecule, and uh, maybe you, you could explain how you did that. You, you measured it by mass spec, right? 
Yes, and, yes. But it, it's extremely labile. It's, it's, I mean, the half-life is, is seconds to minutes, isn't it? Yeah, that's true for adenosine in the blood. But they could stay in the tissue. And when, uh, the way we collect our tissue samples is we collect them from the monkeys and we snap frozen them. So the uh, adenosine is preserved. And then we send to our collaborators, Edwin Jackson, and they will homo homogenize the tissue and measure the adenosine with uh, mass spec. So adenosine in tissue can be measured, but it's very hard to measure in blood because you cannot just snap frozen and homogenize and all that. Well, that's cool, thanks. Thank uh, you. Did, you. did you check on NTCD39 antibodies or because they're um, available? No, not yet. All right, great, yeah. great We don't work. have the cl clones for our monkeys. I have just a, a clarification question. In the correlations, um, they looked like there were more dots than animals. Uh, yes, indeed. So, um, so the, the uh, samples we use to measure CD39, CD73 expression, they are the uh, cells isolated from the intestine. So they are not necessarily the same cell that we uh, snap frozen because we just don't have that much biopsies. So when we do the mass spec, we have some other uh, animals but infected with the same virus and the same settings, but they belong to other protocols that we study other things on, but they have spare biopsies. So we combine the results and have also have more sample size to make the correlation. Well, if there is no more questions, then uh, the next. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.